Flora Shanklin talked about her last conversation with Alberta Jones, her sister. She said, in quote, I left her on the couch reading a magazine about Kennedy getting assassinated. And the last thing I said to her, which still hurts, because she sat there and she said, I hope I don't get assassinated. And I said, you don't worry, you're not the president of the United States. But sadly, this was the last time Flora Shanklin saw her sister, Alberta Jones. Now, you might not know why Alberta Jones is a worthy topic of a speech, but hopefully by the end, you will be impressed and saddened by the work and death of this lost hero in history. Alberta Odell Jones is an unsung black, black female trailblazer of the 1960s whose legacy and mysterious death show the fighting tenacity and racism within her lifetime. And I'm going to start with her beginnings in education. She was born in November of 1930 um, and she, was, um, she went to the Louisville Central High School and the Louisville Municipal College for Negroes until it merged with the University of Louisville due to desegregation, where she finished her education in quote, third in her class, according to the notable Kentucky African American database, a part of the University of Kentucky Libraries. She also went to Howard University School of Law and graduated in 1958, and she passed the Kentucky Bar in the following year. Also in 1959, um, she opened a law office in Louisville, and in 1965, she was the first female prosecutor in Louisville. She was also very business savvy. Lee Remington, a Bella, Mar a Bella Marine um, University professor and lawyer who has studied much on Jones, quoted in a um, WHAS 11 ABC News article by Derek Rose and Lena Duncan, at, in quote, at her death, her estate in today's money was worth about a half a million dollars and that was solely from her buying up property and investments and understanding how business works. But her work in the academic world and the business world is only a reflection of what this lady did. Danino Brown's 2017 Washington Post article on her said, in quote, she gave an interview to the Louisville Courier Journal. She was quoted saying that after she returned from home from law school, people told her, you got two strikes against you. You're a woman and you're a Negro. Jones replied, yeah, I've got one strike left. I've got what I've got one strike left and I've seen people get home runs when all they've got is one strike. Let's look at some of the home runs of her law career. So she was the executive director of the Independent Voter Association. This association registered 6,000 black Americans. And according to um, a 2019 New York Times article by Trip Gabriel, um, Jones was quoted saying, in quote, we taught the Negroes how to use that voting machine. She also participated in the March on Washington in 1963 and in other civil rights marches in Louisville. She became um, the famous fighter Muhammad Ali's first attorney. And in 1965, she was a prosecutor for the Domestic Relations Court in Louisville. In 2019, Uel A. Nielsen of BlackPath.org also noted that in 1964, she was appointed city attorney in Louisville, becoming the first woman of any race to hold that position. But sadly, this is not the only thing that marks the life of Alberta Odell Jones. And at the age of 34, and in August of 1965, she was beaten and tossed over a bridge into the Ohio River and found dead later. So she went out that night after getting a call from a friend about a lawsuit. And her car was later found blocks away, dead, um, with blood in it. Now there is some evidence surrounding this case. There were, in quote, detailed witnesses who reported seeing a woman attacked and dragged from the Sherman Minton Bridge. Also, the car Jones was driving was found in Del Park Terrace, miles away from her body, stated in the WHAS 11 ABC article. And in 2008, a, man, a fingerprint was found in the car. Now, it was from a man who was 17 at the time, and in his defense, he told he said that he used to frequent a park near the bridge, but it was probably from hitchhiking that um, a hitchhiking from. Um, before Jones rented the car. The thing is, there was some deception that's been cited around the polygraph test that he was administered. And the prosecutors decided not to pursue the case a couple weeks later due to the loss of evidence and death of investigators and other key witnesses, in quote, according to the Brown, according to Brown of the Washington Post. And even her purse was found three years later um, on that bridge, three years after her death. Dr. Lee Remington um, started researching in 2013 and she found one detective that was alive, even though she was told all they, they were all dead. She said, in quote, a tremendous amount of evidence was collected in this case. Fingerprints, vacuum samples from every inch of the car by the FBI, blood samples, her purse and all of its contents found three years later with credit cards and checks still inside. Her dentures, cigarette butts from the car, her shoes, her clothes. 
the evidence is now missing. Now in 2017, her case was, this case was reopened, but it still remains unsolved. Her sister Shanklin and Dr. Remington are really trying to keep her legacy alive, it seems. And even Jones now has a banner hanging in downtown Louisville. Alberta Jones' story is a story of reality, but of hope. We know Alberta Jones is a woman that was brutally murdered, but we also see her tenacious work ethic and the confidence she had in adversity. She's a reminder of the fighting spirit of the civil rights movement. There's still a lack of answers um, surrounding her death, and it's really an example of an ill pursuit of justice um, that's now being affected by time. Dr. Remington said, in quote, she deserves that recognition for the many things, the many, many things she did. She was a trailblazer. And I really would agree. I hope this speech reminds you of that ordinary people can affect our lives and there are daily trailblazers all around us um, who can just bring so much impact to other people. Thank you.